Greetings, fellow Shadow Walkers. This is your host, Tim Woolworth. What you are about to hear is bonus content that is normally accessible through our Patreon. With each season of Walk in the Shadows, we will have two to three bonus episodes for patrons only. In addition to these bonus episodes, our patrons get free merchandise, access to a private Discord server, and access to Ask Me Anything sessions along with a host of other benefits. I do hope you enjoy this free content. And if you are interested in hearing more, please visit our Patreon. The link is in the show notes. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy this bonus content. Welcome to our Patreon subscriber bonus episode one for our Noisy Spirit series. This bonus episode is best listened to during the interim between episodes two and three of our main series. This episode, like all other bonus content, would not be possible if it were not for the generous help of patrons like yourself. I want to thank you for that. Every dollar means a lot because it is one step closer to being able to do this full time and continually churn out our high quality, well researched content for you on a weekly basis. In the introduction of episode two, I mentioned the historical case of George Walton and Lithobolia, or the manifestation of hurled stones which was attributed to a stone-throwing devil, or witches, from 17th century colonial America. After listening to the first two episodes in the series, it should be readily apparent that the George Walton case follows the same trajectory of modern-era poltergeist eruptions. At first, a rain of hundreds of stones came down upon his tavern. George Walton and his son, Shadrach, were often in the path of the stones. This was not an isolated occurrence, as it happened with regularity during the summer of 1682. As is typical with cases of stone throwing, no one was ever found with a stone in hand, ready to throw. Events began to get worse as objects in his tavern started being thrown around, and what was described as demonic voices would emanate from the air itself. You may remember in the episode that I mentioned a well-known historical figure in colonial America was involved with the Walton case. In 1682, Increase Mather, one of the most influential Puritan ministers of the time in Boston, and father of the storied Cotton Mather, wrote of the Walton case in his book, Illustrious Providences. Mather mentioned specifically that there were stones being thrown by an unknown force both at the tavern and at Walton's home that resulted in windows being broken on the property. Mather also noted, much like D. Scott Rogo, that the stones only hit people gently as to not cause damage. It was from the writings of Mather that Richard Chamberlain based his book upon at the end of the 17th century. Author Charles Skinner expanded upon stone-throwing devil lore in New England in a book entitled Myths and Legends in Our Own Lands, Volume 2, which was published in 1896. Skinner wrote that, There is an odd occurrence among American legends of tales relating to assaults of people or their houses by imps of darkness. Witchcraft was sometimes manifested in Salem by the hurling of missiles from unseen hands. The stone-throwing devil of Portsmouth is the subject of a tradition more than two centuries of age, but as the stone-thrower appears rather as an avenger than as a gratuitously malignant spirit, he is ill-treated in having the name of the devil applied to him. In this New Hampshire port lived a widow who had a cabin and a bit of land of her own. George Walton, a neighbor, wanted her land, for the situation pleased him, and as the old woman had neither money nor influential friends, he charged her with witchcraft, and, whether by legal chicanery or mere force is not recorded, he got his hands upon her property. The charge of witchcraft was not pressed, because the man obtained what he wanted, but the poor, houseless creature laid a ban on the place, and told the thief he would never have pleasure nor profit out of it. Walton laughed at her, bade her go away, and moved his family into the widow's house. It was Sunday night, and the family had gone to bed, when at one o'clock there came a fierce shock of stones against the roofs and doors. All were awake in a moment. A first thought was that the Indians were making an assault. When the occupants peered cautiously into the moonlight, the fields were seen to be deserted. Yet even as they looked, a gate was lifted from its hinges. Walton ventured out, but a volley of stones, seemingly from a hundred hands, was delivered at his head. He ran back to shelter. Doors and windows were barred and shuttered, but it made no difference. Stones, too hot to hold a hand upon, were hurled through glass and down the chimney. Objects and rooms themselves were picked up and flung at Walton. Candles were blown out. A hand without a body tapped at the window. 
Locks and bars and keys were bent as if by hammer blows. A cheese press was smashed against the wall, and the cheese spoiled. Haystacks in the field were broken up, and the hay tossed into branches of trees. For a long time, Walton could not go out at night without being assailed with stones. Bell, book, candle, and witch broth availed nothing. There's a lot to unpack in this story. First written about briefly by Increase Mather, and then fully expanded in 1698. While the manifestations seemed to track with modern eruptions, there was no mention of an adolescent. George Walton, or the old lady, may have had an adolescent present. We also know that Walton's son, Shadrach, was either 21 or 22 at the time of the events. And although poltergeist-like activities drop off precipitously when someone reaches the age of 20, poltergeist events may still occur with someone that is post-adolescent in the home. Considering that the events followed from the tavern to the home, I suspect this may be the case. What we can be certain of is that the events that plagued both the Walton home and tavern were not caused by witches. Thank you for your time spent walking in the shadows with me. I know your time is valuable, so I appreciate you being here in this moment. This bonus episode was researched, written, and produced by me, Tim Woolworth. The audio wizardry is courtesy of our engineer and fellow explorer of the unknown, Joshua Sean at Zero G ITC. Hopefully this episode made a little of our paranormal world more normal for you. As always, if you have any personal anecdotes, observations, or alternate explanations you would like to share on this or any other topic we've covered, or just maybe you would like to drop a note to say hi, you can always reach us via our email, contact at walkintheshadows.com. Once again, that's contact, spelled C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at walkintheshadows.com. It's a valuable service for sating your paranormal curiosity. Please tell a friend. It really does help. If you want to learn more about this podcast, or myself, please visit our Walk in the Shadows website. The link is in the show notes. On our website, you can find all of our social media accounts and our mailing list. Until next episode, may you and yours be healthy, prosperous, and treated with kindness by everyone you meet both in the light and in the shadows.